Worm is a web serial by J.C. McRae, also known as Wildbow. You can read Worm in its original format by visiting parahumans.wordpress.com or donate to Wildbow's Patreon at patreon.com slash wildbow. This story isn't intended for young or sensitive readers. Readers who are on the lookout for trigger warnings are advised to give Worm a pass. For a complete list, check the description for all of Worm's trigger warnings. Brockton Bay, turn yourself into the law. It's a Magio. Arc 21. Uh-huh. Uh, what, what does, maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy ignorant. What does Imagio, or Ima, Imago, Imago. Imago, Imago. What, does, what does it mean? No uh, clue. Image. image. Okay. Yeah. Like, well, that like Imago tracks. Dei. God. Yeah. Image of God. Okay. Well. Uh, okay. Yeah. I am okay. Go. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, he was the, uh, it was the parrot. And uh, in in, uh, in, in Aladdin, <laughs> in Sinbad. No, no, no. That was a uh, that was a Shakespeare character. <laughs> Marty, I really Sorry. want to yell now. Imago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, in that's him. <laughs> Holy hell! Does it feel wrong? Holy heck! No. Does it feel right? <laughs> there we oh, go. No. I really just wanted you to do it, but I had to do it first. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, free this. I was like, Imago. Say, you just get now out I just, and I just want Gilbert Godfrey to be Skitter in my fan casting. Oh no. Uh, I was going to go with Coil. <laughs> <laughs> with Coil. Oh my god. That would just, be. Just the skin tight uh, suit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, he could be a cord. <laughs> What do you, you can be, uh, oh yeah. Get no. hold on. Since that that's what we're going with. Let's go with a cord. You know, what? Uh, let's just make Gilbert Godfrey us. is just gonna be every main villain, right? He's Jack Slash. He's gonna be <laughs> oh Arms Master. Wait, no, but then when he's, Arms he's Master everyone. becomes defiant, it changes into Henry Cavill for some reason. He's, he's then <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Here we go. He's everyone except <laughs> for Danny DeVito has to be um puppet. Man, it's silent. really just a battle between yeah. Danny yeah. DeVito and, and Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert Godfrey. Oh my god. I Great. like order, Trickster. Order <laughs> means everything has its place. And everyone has their place. Your subordinate's <laughs> place was not here. Rest assured, <laughs> it's better to eliminate this oh, disordered no. element before it does <laughs> too much damage. What a shame. Such we need a to young do girl. Don't worry, my pet. <laughs> we gotta. We just need to do it. We just need to do it. A, a, a reading for the just Patreon. Just one more question. <laughs> the yeah, Patreon. Then good you can god. go. Good uh, god. Just get good god. We'll do like a. Uh, we'll do like a uh, reverse fan casting. We just <laughs> worst yeah. possible fan cast for every character. <laughs> um, worst but that we, possible. Fan that we still want to see. <laughs> That we still want to see, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, well, uh, thanks for that lovely introduction. Uh, welcome back to oh, the Brockton Bay Book Club. We got a full house here today. And we're mm-hmm. diving into arc 21. Mm. We are nearing the end. There are only nine more arcs. Don't say story. that. Don't put Dang. that kind of negativity out in the world. I don't need that. It's like a... Um, it's excuse like a- me? And try, yeah. try that again. Salami <laughs> slink them. Yeah. Jake's potato. Uh, Take me up before you go go. Okay. True. Wakey wakey I, eggs and Jakey. That one's okay. one of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> Jakey. Sweet Jakey. Anyway, <laughs> Jacob's dying have... inside. He's like, please don't call me. That. I'm trying, trying so hard. I work. <laughs> I work. I spent 32 goddamn years on this earth cultivating. <laughs> A normal use of my name. And one damn meme later, 
<laughs> it is just out the door. <laughs> what are you going to do? Well, yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Anyway, let's dive into it. You got a fun <laughs> little arc here. Not a, not a, not a whole lot happens. Uh, well, I, not, okay. What? Like until we get to the, like, listen, it's, it's like not a whole lot is like some fun side quests and then, and then everything at the end. So it all comes uh, together. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's kind of, let's kind of get through it. Uh, I want to, we want to just go chapter at a time. I was kind of thinking yeah. chapter at a time for this one. I have so few notes for such a small arc. I have so many notes, and I'm going to warn everyone that there is a very high likelihood of me crying at a Aww. specific spot. Because when I went to tell Alan about it today, I, I started Aww. crying. And he was so nice. And I just, yeah. So You're already going to cry now talking about it. I'm going <laughs> to. No, I will cry, though, at some point. So, you know. <laughs> We're here we for get it. There. Well, let's dive in. Yeah. Chapter one. Uh, chapter one. So, as we all remember, as we left off, things did not end well for, for Skitter. She was outed. And so, starting off chapter one, uh, the Undersiders gear up for retaliation uh, and hit the PRT. Uh, we have a little conversation with Skitter and Tag. And Tag declares that this is a war, not a game, little girl. <laughs> Made me really fucking mad. <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn tech. I have so many notes. <laughs> I think I said, my dude, no. <laughs> what's the what's the name? I forget his name. Uh like the lieutenant in Starship Troopers. That's who that's in my mind, that's who that's who Tag looks like to me. Wait, the lieutenant? Uh, like uh you know, at the you know, who's like going with I mean, general I forget it's been forever since I've seen the movie. But he's, he's, you know, just the total military hard ass. Uh, his uh, name we're talking is about his Sergeant Jean or is it Sergeant? Raz- Zach. Sure, John, sure, yeah. John, yep. John, John <laughs> Rask. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Why not? You can add Starship Troopers to the list of movies I haven't yeah, come seen. Come on, man. Same, you want to live forever? Perfect. Yeah, you know. Rask- that guy. Zach. <laughs> How would you say that? <laughs> R-A-S-C-Z-A-K. Rajak. Zim. You gotta, it's just got to Charles gotta, Zim. Just, no, not what? Zim. Anyway, not side tracks aside. You gotta turn it into a grumble at the end. Right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, anyway, the old all guy. that to say. Yeah, the old guy. Sure. All that oh, to say, shoot. tag in my mind is the really like grizzled war vet <laughs> just steps in to get shit done. And, uh, and it's really it's, annoying. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I have, uh, God, Tag is such a little machismo bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just, oh, yeah. what a hard ass just backing up the fact that he has fucking nothing going on behind those eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least he has a loyal wife, I guess. Nah, she's a bitch too. I mean, I don't like her either. But. Oh, oh, wait, I have that. Last note, fuck him and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I mean, not to, you know, actually, no, I'm not going to open that can of worms. Never mind, never mind. I was like, uh, hey, you, you support his, uh, his military action? And she's like, bullshit. completely. I'm like, cool, just as guilty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she tries to get the military discounts at places. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. She walks in, and then if they don't have... Don't you know discount. that I'm a, a PRT wife? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> puts, that, puts that on a resume, prior experience, like military service, spouse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, yeah. Uh, tag going, uh, let's see, um, I'm here to stay. Bitch, Bitch, you are like a bug bite away from being interim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you realize your predecessor had powers and didn't make it to work, right? Yeah, like, he didn't even make it all the way into the office, my dude. Like, he, like ah! what in God's green earth makes you think that you aren't just... Like, she walked in and was like, hey, cool, you're a dickhead, right? And he's like, I'm totally a dickhead. That is correct. And then, that's just, you're dead. So, like, I don't know what you th- thought was going to happen, but like, you know... <laughs> You're done for, son. Like, mm-hmm. I, I will say, I'm here to stay. Get the fuck out of here. 
she says how like the satisfying sound of of him when he starts screaming, and I couldn't help but like agree heavily. <laughs> like, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, you might talk big, but you don't like cockroaches running all over your face, do you, buddy boy? I mean, neither would I. But yeah, that'd be rough. Yeah, everybody's That's everybody's right. a big boy until they get the old cockroach <laughs> urethra. Trick, you know. Wow. Oh, no. Oh, no. I was gonna say just a cockroach in the ear, in, but like, all right. A, uh, what the fuck, Taylor? We've just entered our first. Uh, what the fuck, Alan? Oh no, we have. We're gonna have a couple of what the <laughs> oh, fuck we, we have moments one of those. coming up. So yeah. get ready. Is it, yeah, this is a good. This is a good. What the fuck, Taylor? Arc. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's, I I do love the beginning of this chapter where everybody is double checking their identities. You know, a very smart move. Hey, mm-hmm. some, somebody just got outed. Let's uh let's uh, double check. Everybody good? Um, yeah. And uh, you know, and then Taylor's like, I got more time to do villain shit because I literally cannot do anything else. Not that <laughs> she was going to, but uh, uh, she's locked and loaded now. Yeah, and then finally, there's a conversation. I forget who says the line, uh, but something about not batting for the other team. Um, oh, it's it's, it's uh, was it Lisa talking with Perrion about yeah. you know yeah you know like don't bat for the other team? And I got upset because I had to double check the conversation. I was like, "Bro, bitch is right there." <laughs> yeah. To which I then had to go double check. I just looked it up <laughs> right now. <laughs> Bitch isn't gay. Yeah, I did know that. Per uh, Coil is per black. Himself. Bitch isn't gay. <laughs> Piggot is not Amanda Waller. I was going to say. I was I, say. <laughs> this has been a flip. I, I've read, like we've talked about, this is like my third or fourth time reading it, and maybe my. Second time listening, you know, on audiobook. Let's not even forget that I've listened to an audiobook a few times. Thanks, I, son. I had no idea. <laughs> uh, maybe I just <laughs> made some assumptions. I mean, clearly but, you made but, some assumptions. But, to be fair, a big part of my assumptions, even my first time, and we'll get to things that I've missed every time I've read this, is when her little backpack is like snuggling with her on the couch. I was like, oh, that's cute. She's got like her 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 little lesbian uh, dog buddy. Wait, what? Hmm. And I she know got that. Kind of mean, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm talking about. She's got that one girl that like she's yeah. the one on the couch with. We're jumping way ahead, Alan. But all right. I, well, I know, but <laughs> I I thought the first time when I was an innocent wee babe that that's the way she swung, and you know. I don't feel like I was ever proven wrong otherwise, but you know, now I rethink everything I know. Apparently, <laughs> I just you know, that's funny. I'm in shock. <laughs> You're shook. I'm shook. Yeah, I mean, really shook. I mean, to be fair, she's always struck me as a bit more of maybe leaning asexual, not in the sense that I know that she really is, but in the sense of like she just doesn't care. Yeah, I also felt that, I but know. I felt it more of the the pansexual side of it, of like she values loyalty more than anything else. Mm, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Just I, I mean, we're making assumptions about a character who, for all we know, never that's true has romantic relations in the story. She or in does, the yeah. Well, she? romantic is strong. No, well, let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll save that. Yeah, this is not uh, spoil. This is the spoiler-free podcast. Indeed. Yes, thank Did that you for dissecting worm. Yeah. Well, we'll say to this point. Then we've not seen romantic could be inclinations. Wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It's 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 a funny little scene, though. I think yeah. that's part of one of those things where people are going to read into text a lot of things. <laughs> you know, oftentimes, regardless of what an author says about certain characters, and. Uh, that's just how people read stories, as long as it doesn't mm-hmm. impact the story. That's true. Is it? You know what it is, Alan? It's because she dresses kind of butch, doesn't? Isn't it? It, it absolutely one hundred percent is. <laughs> she's dresses got the combat boots and the short hair, and you just made a stereotypical judgment call. 
<laughs> we won't fall. Typical for- straight white man. <laughs> straight <laughs> white man. Ding. Uh, gotcha, bitch. Uh, <laughs> every every fucking time. Anyways, God, it always gets me. That's fair. Also, again, as always, with those kind of funny little insights, it's always worth noting that the entire story is from Taylor's perspective. So, you know, uh, unreliable narrator. Who knows? It's part of the fun of yeah, the story. Yeah. Here's the thing: fan fiction is a free country. Freer than America nowadays. And <laughs> you can believe you can believe or think whatever you want in the universe of fan fiction. Uh-huh. That's true. That's all. Uh, okay. I will yeah. say though, I will say, okay. I want to give Tag a little bit of credit. Not because I think he's not a a a boom a boot hole, but um but mostly because I I get the whole strongman thing because his whole thing is like, I am trying to restore this nearly dead organization. And one of the ways you can do that is to make a big move and to stand your ground. I mean, he's standing in a place where the previous person got kidnapped. Then the one after that, although he may have been a villain, was assassinated essentially, for lack of a better term. Like, I don't know. I mean, at a certain point, you got to ask, is this really the job? Like, who would you who who would want that job? Right. Suddenly, director of the PRT of Brockton Bay isn't a promotion. It's like, oh, you want me to die, huh? So, yeah. So the fact that he was willing to take it, I give him a little bit of credit for that. Not in the sense of like he's a hero or anything, but just like, okay, I kind of see what you mean. He's like got his whole like. I'm the one they send in when things are going wrong. When there's <laughs> yeah, stuff to fix. You know, I'm like, oh my all right, maybe you're a little full of yourself, but you probably got the cred to back it up at least. <laughs> I don't know. Or at least the ego. At least the ego, mm-hmm. yeah. You yeah. have to be a little bit insane to take the position for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, that tracks. I do love too, though, that they make this whole plan and ultimately it's like, all Taylor really wanted was like, like she wanted to hit him where it hurt, but her whole thing basically was like, I just really need to ask Tag why. Yeah. Like that's all she really wanted is that why? answer to that question. Are you a piece of shit? <laughs> also, the real answer is not that he was qualified for the job of fixing up this place. The real answer is that he was so expendable. <laughs> in the PRT that they were like ah if we lose this one like oh well he's literally a placeholder like <laughs> I could see guy, that I this see guy that. is a uniform that will just do what he's the work. <laughs> he, he will just he will just be a person there to you know combat the villains until we get our shit together. And if they kill him, like, oh, well, no great loss. Like, I can't imagine that he has much political, like, clout with anybody else because of that attitude. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I don't know, though. I mean, it seems yeah, maybe, like right? stubbornness might be in high need for the PRT right now. So, yeah, I don't know. If you're going to be yeah. a normal human working with heroes under the supposed belief that you have more authority than superheroes, I can understand that boosting your ego and your stubbornness a bit. I don't know. I, obviously, we don't know yeah. the inner workings of it all, but it is interesting fun, to ponder, though, to like, how much about. do they really value him? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Mm. No, like, I, see your, I see your point, Piggott, I'm thinking like Piggott. Piggott was stubborn. Uh, Piggott was just as stubborn as this guy, but at least was smart enough to back it all up. Yeah. Like, she understood the system, because we've talked about this since the very beginning of the idea, like, that there's, you know, there's no black and white, and, you know, everyone plays the game, and and he just kind of, like, he's like, fuck it. And it's like, well, can you have, like, a little bit of understanding of, like, what's going on? It's like, he just... Yeah, your arms master approach to this whole situation is what got us here in the first place. Right, yeah, yeah. I think she's, yeah. I think Taylor says it in the sec- in the second chapter or maybe the third, but she basically, like, this idea that, like, 
he's a bull in a china shop. He, like, he doesn't understand how delicate of a situation this is. Like, there does have to be a balance. And he just doesn't, like, he doesn't get it. And it it messes with the system. I think that's, she says that she has that conversation, actually, with Miss, Miss Militia yeah. later. But, but yeah. Yeah, I think doing a deep dive comparison between him and Piggott would be really fun for an extended talk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Piggott is literally just all the things. He has all the same traits as Piggott, except Piggott has more and better, which is why we like Piggott. Piggott also you know? has a bit of tact. Like, she was she was brash with some choices, like using the undersiders as bait. But, like, yeah. she also, like... I don't know. And she has she made the same deal with Tattletale. Yeah, she's also made the same decisions to be obstinate and stubborn and not helpful and be a dickhead, much like this guy. But she has all of these other traits to her that make up for the fact that like, yeah, she is savvy. She has a bunch of, you know, rules that she follows and also at the same time is playing playing a bit of politics with all of this. This guy has like you said, no tact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he is kind of like all force and no tact, it seems. And I guess I could imagine the higher ups being like that. That's the tactic they want to deploy in Brockton Bay now, right? Like they've had Pickett, yeah. who kind of worked with the villains, tried to make things more uh, copacetic, you might say. Uh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> drink. Best word. Best word. But I could see them being like, you know what? We just need to really show these villains what's what. You know, Piggott, or not Piggott, Tag. Uh, weird that they both have double Gs, you know. But anyways. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just kind of like, you know what? We need to show these villains what's what. Tag, go in there and mess them up. I could I could mm-hmm. see that kind of being the... Yeah. Yeah. Even if it violates all the, the code and everything. They're more like pirate guidelines code. than actual rules. Yes, I would <laughs> yeah, just said pirate code. <laughs> I heard you whisper it right when I said it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. All right. uh, So move on to chapter two. Uh, Taylor rides off on her own with one of Rachel's dogs uh, and ends up having a chat at the graveyard with her mother, kind of debriefing, uh, and writes a letter to her dad. Not much in this episode, but a lot more of like self-reflection than anything else. I really liked this chapter. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but there was something about it that just Taylor reflecting on everything. And I think think part of what it is for me that I think is interesting, one of my issues I've had with Taylor, not really a real issue, but just a small thing, is that she does kind of have this belief that if everybody not she she says she doesn't, but this belief that like if everybody just did what she wanted, then everything would be fine. Mm. Um, she's a little bit more like a chord than she may realize. I was in that just way. about to say that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, a chord's just a lot more. Well, a chord's power might make him actually right more <laughs> per, more percentage of the time than Taylor, <laughs> but um, but I think this is kind of her reckoning of realizing, okay, how can I make this work? when everybody's not going to listen to me. Everybody's not going to do what I want. Like, what's the right thing to do now when I feel like I'm stuck and trapped and nobody's doing what I need them to do? And, oh, and I love the reveal of Dinah's note here as well. Yes, I've been waiting for this note. Yeah, yeah, that was an old thing from quite a ways back. So, I'm glad to see it revealed here. That was good. Yeah. Um, I have a note. My first note of this is, oh my God, Taylor, listen to Lisa, please. <laughs> uh, it, it's right before she she mm-hmm. runs away, this kind of like moment with Lisa where Taylor's trying to figure out like, why would they, why would they do this? Like, I don't understand. Like, you know, why would they act like that? And she's trying to figure out, you know, why Dinah would, would work with them. And like, she's trying to come to terms with all of it. And like, are are we all just Lisa in this scenario? Just like listening to Taylor go off and be like, so I mean, yeah, but they're, we are the villains. Like they are trying to clear up the yeah. city. Like you realize that this is like, they're trying to, they're trying to do what they think is right. And it was just like, oh, but they're breaking the rules. It's like, okay, 
<sighs> Taylor, <laughs> it feels like after all of this, like the fact that you've officially accepted that you're a villain, like you're going to act like a villain now, even knowing how this arc ends, uh, like th- this is, there's going to be people who don't, who don't get it. They're, they're, going to be people in power who look at you and go, yeah, she's a villain. She cannot run the city. We are trying to rebuild. Now that we have a portal trying to make stuff happen. And she like, like as much as, I don't know, she just like doesn't get it that like they would, they would not want her to be in power. And like, yeah, well, we're going to maybe take some drastic action. As much as I hate what Tag did, like, yeah, we're going to take drastic action to like get rid of you as an obstacle so that we can have our city back. And I don't know. I just, uh, I she like mouths off a little bit here. And I'm just, all I can think of is like, you're talking about the PRT not being flexible and not trying to like work with you guys to make the city better. But you're not like, you're not understanding where they're coming from either. Like this is a, this is one of those weird, yeah, she's well, no one's going to agree. So we're all just going to stand here and yell at each other, like glare at each other. Like you're, like, come on, Taylor. Like, have mm-hmm. have some perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the Taylor's youth kind of shows itself here in that sense specifically of like, again, it's that mindset of all I'm trying to do is good stuff for the city. But yes, you've done it in a villainous way. And that's part of what she kind of reckons with here at this graveside scene, which is part of what I like about it, is she's like, am I a good person? Am I a bad person? I don't really know anymore. Like. I've done what I thought was the right thing and I don't think I'd go back and change anything that I've done. It all felt right to me in the moment, but you know, that perspective of kind of realizing, okay, yeah, I have done some bad stuff and maybe I need to, (laughs) I need to make amends for that or need to fix it somehow, whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, That groundskeeper though, what a champ. Oh, what a peach. What a peach. Can I ask you a question? This was something I wrote down, and I, I want to get y'all's opinion about this as well. Uh, Taylor brings up the fact that the PRT, back before everything went down with Leviathan, whatever, that the PRT wasn't as aggressive against Empire 88 or the ABB uh, in comparison to them, the undersiders now. And this idea that, like, you know, you had you had white supremacists and, and a, a bomb maker blowing people up all over the city and you weren't as aggressive towards them as you were to villains who have literally been cleaning up a broken city and mm. helping people. And I and I was thinking, I wrote that. I said, like, why is this? Why is this the case? And I, I get that probably a lot of it is connected to the whole, like, well, they're trying to rebuild it and the portal now has, you know, as part of that. But, like, they were still aggressive to them before the portal happened. So, like, what, what do you guys think about that they're this kind of like is it just that they're trying to make uh make a an example out of the undersiders i think i always kind of interpreted it as more that for the for uh, prior to the undersiders the prt wasn't threatened by the villains they Mm. they needed them i mean for the prt to function you have to have bad guys right to justify their existence so it was almost like, it's kind of like a really deep cut. I don't know if Wildbow intended this, but it kind of feels like a, like a deep look at, uh, you know, generally how human society evolves where there's the whole concept of needing people on both sides of the spectrum to balance it out, that kind of thing, where the PRT mm-hmm. needs their villains in place so that they can justify their own existence. But they were never threatened by them. And then post-Leviathan, Rise of the Undersiders, now the PRT has... I mean, we've joked about it, kind of lost their purpose. They don't protect mm. the city anymore. The undersiders do. So it always read to me as more like now there was an, an actual threat to the existence of the PRT and what they do. So now they have to like try to eliminate the threat. Mm. I'd, I'd agree with that too. And I think I'd add on to it as well that although, I don't know. I kind of think of it like, imagine a big city right now, like Chicago, New York, Atlanta. There are gangs that are active there, right? That the police are well aware of. They do their best to manage, but they're not, um, you know, they're not, 
they're not having an all out war against gangs, you know, like maybe they did in the past. They're just trying to do their best to catch people when they can, stop as much as they can, and then maybe through the system, eventually it'll reduce the number of gangs, drug violence, whatever it might be. I think the difference would be like if one of those gangs rose up and said, we own this section of Atlanta now. Ob- it's mm-hmm. like everybody knew what Empire 88's territory was, and you were careful mm-hmm. if you were there, but they never like came right out and said, we own this part of Brockton Bay, and this belongs to us now. And I wonder if that's yeah, part that's of it, too, is right. The undersiders have kind of come up and said, it's not just that this is our territory and we're doing criminal activity in it. Even though they're mm-hmm. doing good things, it's under the guise of, this is my area, and even mm-hmm. the heroes don't have the right to tell me what to do and what not to do. They've been more blatant about it. They've been a lot more blatant about it, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's yeah, a we- much more blatant power grab. And right. I mean, we talk about unwritten rules, like... The unwritten rule is that you do not own the city. The PRT owns the city, but you might, you know, run it in the background. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I think, I think too, there's a bit of um, personal personal bias here too, because I do think that when when Bakuda started going going off, like the PRT said, okay, everybody, villains included, let's take her out. You know, mm-hmm. so it's not like yeah. they don't jump into action when somebody does threaten that balance because Bakuda blatantly came out and said, I'm going to blow up the city. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Yeah. So I don't know. I think maybe it's just the blatant, the blatancy of it of being like, yeah, we own the city. What are you going to do about it, PRT? And then how does that look to the outside world to be like, wow, the PRT is still in Brockton Bay, even though it's a villain owned city. What's up with that? How are they so weak? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Real. I don't know. You do know, Nick. Yeah. You do know. You do. You do know. That's <laughs> a great I don't answer. Know. I don't, don't know. Don't <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just me. It's just me. You know? <laughs> just me. I don't know if I'm making any sense. I don't know, sense man. It's just me. It's just me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying words. I'm, it's just words, man. It's just words. <laughs> <laughs> just, just right off the dome. You know. Right off the dome. Hot <laughs> off the mind press. Good question. Good, good, good question, Hannah. The brain griddle. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I just, I, I had that written down. I was thinking about it. But I think, I think both of you are, are absolutely right. Yeah, you know it. Chapter also, three? it's uh, one, one, one quick, one, one more little thing before I move on. Uh, just because, honestly, only because I took notes this time. Uh, <laughs> the idea that, like, one of the things that, that I, that really grinds my gears about Taylor is that she has such a hyper fixation on Dinah for such a huge chunk of of the, you know, the first half right. of the book. And it, it feels like in this chapter, with her like thinking and talking about the the PRT and and the school and everything. And like it feels like we're we're seeing that hyper fixation again where she's like super, super focused on the fact that like I can't believe they broke the rules. And like attacking the school like oh my gosh it's that's one step too far and i find it i just find it interesting that like this is the thing and obviously it's personal because it's her but like this 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 fixation on like the in, of all the injustices this is the thing that i'm gonna like fixate on that this is this is not okay like we can kill people and rob banks but die like kidnapping a child that's too far <laughs> Like it's the same idea. I was like, well, unmasking a supervillain is one step too far. And I, I, I don't know. I just, I find it interesting that like Taylor, who is so good at being able to see like big picture stuff is so, can also so like fixate on the tiniest of things that doesn't mm-hmm. feel like it matters in yeah. the grand scheme. Like, okay, well now your person out and like now everybody knows who you are and you're, you know, you know, your personal life is now revealed to the world. But like, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like your yeah. child brain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I forget she's a. She, I forget yeah. she's a kid. <laughs> we always have to remind ourselves. I feel like. Yeah. Uh, I can move on to chapter three now. <laughs> no, get all the good uh, thoughts. Right. Any other it's, thoughts? It's yeah, just because in. of the notes. Uh, all right, so chapter three. Uh, Taylor hangs out with Regent. An imp, 
finds out what they've been up to, and we end up taking down uh, the Fallen in the meanwhile. And a very unfortunate incident with Valifor, um, where Taylor oh. blinds him, which is our what the fuck Taylor moment for the episode. Because uh. uh, what the fuck, Taylor? Jesus. <laughs> Well, that was Riddle. disgusting. That was that was truly revolting. I can excuse I also, lung. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> I can lung excuse heals. doing it with a yeah. spoon. Not yeah. the spoon. Not the spoon. God. But putting maggots in the but, eyeballs. That's oh where I draw the God, line. God, that's horrifying. And and she's like, I think they could maybe fix it. Like, what do you mean? Uh, he's a normal person with maggots in his eyes. Like, he's not going to bounce <laughs> back from that, Taylor. God. Uh, oh, to be fair. I also remember Valfor taking way longer to deal with. And that he is we, wrapped up in a single single arc or we single dealt chapter. With him pretty quick. He's not yeah. even he's not even villain of the week length. This is just nope. like. Yep. Villain of the scene. I, re- I mean, I, <laughs> I felt scene. like Not I remember. Not even of the whole chapter. He just like takes up one little, little bit at the end. I felt like Butcher was also more than one chapter. And then, no. Sure, I remember fast. Butcher going on for a while when I first read and it. And to be fair, it does go on for a while within the chapter with no break. It does. But it, does. it is just a chapter. chapter. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll get no. to that. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, this whole chapter, though, was full of moments that I was re-remembering and I remembered them being not this close together. And uh, this was funny. I got to the end of the chapter and I was like, wait a minute, what happens next? Cause, or the arc. So I was like, I've, I, this was everything I thought was coming in like the next three arcs. So, so. <laughs> went for some surprises. What, what, what were we calling it? Yeah, uh, I was re-listening re- uh, to what Nick Wormentia. said in a previous episode and he was calling it Wormentia. Yeah. Wormentia, yeah. Wormentia. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. We all suffer from it. Back to our buddy Valifor. We do. Of yeah. of all the people, of all the people to put mag like if you if you're gonna put maggots in somebody's eyes, I, I do understand the choice of of villains to eyeball infest. Like I do <laughs> I, it may I mean it tracks. Like the guy is super dangerous because of of his of his of his of his eyeball noggins, and 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 that's it's horrific, horrific. But like, it's, I, I mean, it tracks. Mm-hmm. It's one way to take out a villain. I guess it's effective. Taylor's yeah. just so cold about it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Tried She's and like, true. Oh, I've tried this before. <laughs> Trusty <laughs> old eye removal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and yeah, he does have an eye-based power. Signature so, you know, move, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like to- Taylor's signature move is eye removal. <laughs> <laughs> this, ra- this rate it is. Bone Saw would be proud. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, yeah, I have... I, in the context of this whole arc of knowing now what Taylor was going to do, but not knowing it when I was reading. All I could <laughs> think with this chapter is that Taylor's being such a bitch. Like, has zero self-awareness. Like, the fact that she gets on Regent's case for not thinking, like, 18 million steps ahead. And she's like, you ought to be thinking about that. And he's like, I don't know. I'll just figure it out when we get there. And she's like, well, you need to know what you're going to do. And he's like, like... <laughs> I don't I I don't feel like I need to do that. And like now I know that she's trying to make sure that they're going to be okay without her. But like yeah. in the moment, I was so annoyed with her. Like, oh my god, get your head out of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to uh, next chapter. Uh, we were <sighs> just getting situated here. Um Oh, yes. I did have wait one one more thought on mm-hmm. chapter three. Chap- yes, yes, yes. Um, I I also have a couple more things. So yeah, so no, we'll, there were a couple yeah. more things here. So, reaching an imp. That whole interaction was uh-huh. really cool, but at the same time, I realized I was like, I don't think I could ever trust someone to that level. Mm. It was a like a really really. 
uh, it's a creepy interaction. Obviously, it's it's very consenting there, but like to to forfeit control of your body like that to somebody else is gave me a little shake. So I was like, I I just I don't think I uh, I could ever do that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I it makes me think about uh, two teenagers that I had in my um in my youth group. And after I left, there was a very bad incident that involved uh, two technically consenting teenagers. But, you know, because they're dumb as fuck, like it ends up being a really bad situation. Yeah. And their children. It ends up being a really bad situation. Um, Not too unlike what could happen between Regent and, you know, uh, and Imp. So, like, I'll be honest, I didn't think of anything of it while reading it. And then now that you, you know, you bring that up, I'm like, yeah, like I, could I trust people now in that situation? Absolutely. Would I trust anybody when I was a teenager? Absolutely not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I think I was much more trusting as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I get it. Imp's like, I mean, Imp's reasoning is like, I wanted to know what it felt like. Like I, I get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the risky. fact that it's it. Yeah, the fact that it's Regent is the issue here. Like, the, yeah, because I mean, he's our pal and all, but he's also a murderer and all, and a rapist and uh, a lot of other things. So <clears throat> that was a bold move, Imp. Yep. Also, the, they are boning. Like it, I think that's heavily implied, implied yeah. but also, but also, kind of not. Like I think it's, I think it's heavily implied that Taylor thinks they are, but I'm not convinced as a reader that they are. Um, mm-hmm. it, it feels weird. very, uh, it, it, yeah. It it's just one of those things where like I'm, these are child characters, and I'm never really comfortable talking about uh, intimate relationships between, yeah, <laughs> children. Your children, yeah. Um, no. But to all that being said, a lot of the relationship sort of, it feels very much like it's more of a comfort than an attraction where mm-hmm. both yeah. Regent and Nymp are, are very similarly minded. They both feel like outcasts. They're both kind of part of the group, but also clearly not part of the group. And I think they have a lot of comfort in that with each other. Yeah. Um, you know, whether or not that is anything more, I think is is intentionally vague. Um, but yeah, it doesn't necessarily feel uh, sexual in nature. Mm. I mean, physical parts aside, like I do really enjoy the camaraderie that they share as yeah. like th- that that dynamic of back and forth, and even like as Taylor's talking, the two of them like rolling their eyes and being sarcastic about, oh well, mom's here, you know, whatever. Like I really enjoy that aspect of. Of their relationship. And so in a way, it makes sense that Imp would have been like, yeah, sure. I trust you. Like, why not? You know? And, and, uh, and, you know, with that being like, I th- what does she say? She says, with the understanding that, like, if you misuse the power, like, I just have to wait till you're asleep and then I eviscerate you. It's like, oh, yeah, well, okay. I mean, that, that is true. <laughs> well, and it was even more, was, I think it was more than that too, because, because of how Imp's power works, sort of in a reverse, like, the second Regent just stops thinking about her for a moment, mm-hmm. he he loses it because right. she's then she's back. So like right. she has a really you have really nice fail safe sort of built in. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, still sketchy. Mm. Mm. True. They kind of give me friends with benefits vibes at this point. If that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. 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 Like no. Again, like you said, not necessarily sexual, but yeah, I, maybe a little. you know, it's weird because like, both of them feel like they they are just I don't know into casual sex, but then the two of them together feel like they are a couple of nerds playing video games. Yeah, yeah, right. It's a weird. I like I like them. We are talking about children, but I like them. Yeah, together. <laughs> if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Like, it doesn't feel weird. Like, I, I'm not a huge fan of Taylor and Brian just because it just it feels weird. But, like, if you had to group people up in the Undersiders, like, that's a pairing that, like, makes sense. 
isn't that kind of funny how like our main protagonist's initial love interest never really feels like it works, and yet yeah. the the two outsiders it it feels a lot more natural, even though we get very mm-hmm. little of their actual interactions. Yeah. yeah, I kind of wish we had more of it because I really do like Imp, and I've always been a a fan of 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 Regent. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, we need another need need another interlude. Yeah, mm-hmm. that would be nice. Any more thoughts on chapter three? Nope. I shall move no. on. Chapter four, um, Citrine and. Taylor and Gru meet up and Citrine reveals that Accord is making some new uh, cauldron capes uh, from hand-selected people. They discuss the end of the world and then Brian and Taylor come together one last time. I swear to God, I did not put that in on purpose. (laughs) (laughs) Dang, Hannah. (laughs) It wasn't on purpose. Uh, And my note, my note here is in all caps, uh, my my note is damn they boned. <laughs> also, <laughs> also she was like talking about them getting a little like handsy and like kissy, and she said Brian, and I straight up wrote, "Who the fuck is Brian?" Because <laughs> I did not remember. I did not remember that Gru's name was Brian. I had completely forgotten that, and that I think it just that goes to show you how goldfish wow. brain. I That's mean, how crazy lo- <laughs> were Mencha right there? <laughs> <laughs> it's. It, I think it has to do with how little I see Brian as like uh, a human underneath the mask. Like Regent, Ooh. I can see him as the you know the the teenager That's underneath fair. the the mask. Uh, but Brian's one of those people like we don't see him outside the mask, and especially recently after all the trauma, like he st- he kind of hides himself behind his power, especially recently. So like Brian, I'm like, who's Brian? Who the fuck is oh Brian? <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> For the amount of times we've said hot Brian is hot. I know. I know. B- believe right. me, no one is more shocked than I. <laughs> we're Menchas. <laughs> we're Menchas real strong. We need an infomercial about the, the, the Do you have are you suffering Mencha? from a severe case yes, of Worm Menchas? That's exactly what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Can't keep your capes and real people names straight. <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> There's help for you. <laughs> it's called rereading the damn fucking material. The damn fucking material. <laughs> <laughs> Pay some goddamn attention. Oh my god. Try reading comprehension. Call 980-999-0438. Also, <clears throat> I wrote I do not for one second believe that you had a condom tucked into that skin tight suit of yours. And if you did, I wouldn't trust it. And I, I wouldn't uh, trust yeah. it for First a second. Off, they have pockets. He has a leather jacket. And stuff. You, okay, but you think that Brian came prepared? No, oh, I think you know he what? came. Never mind. Did, Scratch did he come <laughs> <the record? laughs> I mean, yeah. you know. Okay, speaking yeah. of the speaking of the children thing. Um, <laughs> is, it, is it funny? No, no. Is it funny to anybody else though? That. No, trust me. There's a point to this. I promise. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so scared. Scared. So scared. We trust you. So when Taylor comes in, she says, "Sit." She's like thinking to herself, right? She's like, "Citrine's been keeping him company." Well, at least I hope not like oh. that, uh, right? Yeah. And I'm like, "Excuse me, that's like a twenty-something-year-old woman. He's also, like 17. <laughs> also, she says something along the lines of like, "Uh, like she's not his type or something." Yeah. And I was like. Bitch, what are you talking? How the fuck you? What do you? What the fuck do you mean? Did, what? You? How do you know who Gru's type is? You, can Can you please? Like, oh my god, I don't know why it drove me absolutely bonkers. Like that she goes, she's like, well, he's not really his. Type. I'm like, Taylor, you're not not to not to be mean, but like Taylor, you are not all that attractive. Like, can you please calm the fuck down? It's very like, possessive. Yeah, very possessive. It's so possessive. Like, oh my gosh. Although, although we once again run into the unreliable narrator thing where I think she's a bit more attractive than she thinks she is, of course. Is that mm-hmm. what we're what we're banking on? Cause I've I don't know. I think I've seen I've seen too much uh like fan art where she's just kind of like the boring chick. That sounded really like, mean. I didn't mean for that to sound mean. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's fine. Um, I think we know what you mean, but I, I don't know. I get the, like, that is her self description. Right. And I think that everybody knows your own perception of yourself is off. Like for people who struggle with image issues in particular, like she does, your self image is a lot worse than it actually is. Yeah. Um, you know, like if you could see yourself through other people's eyes to bring up an episode of a uh, delicious and dungeon that I watched the episode <gasps> where there's a bunch of mimics and it's all yeah. based on like how they see each other, um, mm. which is really funny, but it, it's one of those things where like, if you could see, if she could see herself, how Brian saw her, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, even like when the construction workers cat call her, she's like, it's not because I'm attractive or anything. It's just because I'm wearing a dress and I'm not hideously ugly in a monster, you know, I'm like, okay, well, Maybe and cat calling is not like a good thing, but like I don't know. It just it it's that yeah. unreliable narrator thing for me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Press X is out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I feel like we get a hint of that too, even with um, if we go back to Emma's interlude, where she's like, oh, she's really changed. Like you can tell she's like like there's something different she's about got her, right? Muscles and. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Arm. That's what I'm thinking. Like, obviously, Emma's not looking at her from the lens of attraction, but I'm like, I don't think you're think like Emma. Looked at her and was like, "Oh wow, look how much more confident she, you know, she looks." And mm-hmm. that's you know, sort of just the general thing of like, wow, Taylor you know, just isn't confident in her appearance. So yeah. she doesn't think she's pretty. Yeah, and uh, I mean, even Emma is like, well, you know, she looks good when she, you know, basically when she feels good. Yeah. Yeah. Confidence does go a long way into attractiveness, too. So, chapter five. Yeah. The, the only ch- chapter that I actually have notes for. Yay. Yeah. It's a good chapter. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so chapter five. Um, Taylor heads home in the rain uh, and finds Miss Militia, Flechette, and Parian uh, waiting for her. Uh, Miss Militia apologizes. Uh, they discuss Tattletale's portal and then make a truce for moving forward uh, regarding the PRT and the capes and the villains of Brockton Bay. A good fucking chapter, for sure. It was a good chapter. I really like the conversation between uh, Miss Militia and uh, Taylor here. Yeah. Um, It kind of, for the first time, kind of humanized Miss Militia for me. I haven't, I'm not really a fan of her character too much. Just mostly because she doesn't do a whole lot in the story. Um, but here it really felt like she is essentially just a cog in the machine. And she is doing her best to do her best. And recognizes that she's on the wrong side sometimes. But like her hands are tied. She can't really do anything. Mm. It was just a, it was a good little moment for her. I liked a little bit of growth we got for her character. I mean, I mean, since her her interlude, I've really been interested in Miss Militia, and this did feel like an appropriate move for her, right? For her to be the one to say, like, and you know, this is the connection back to before the Echidna fight, where uh, Miss Militia, Weld, and Taylor had a conversation, and so it does. Oh, excuse me, I just smacked myself in the face of my microphone. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> anyways, it feels like a full circle moment for them uh, in their little interactions, which I like. Yeah. Alan, you had notes? Oh, I've got so many notes. Uh, Miss Militia is your best bet. Uh, it's just one of them. So, like, go with her, I guess. Uh, okay, backing all the way up to the people who are trapped in the distortion field. Oof. All right. Who the fuck used the distortion grenade? Mm-hmm. Like we know we talked I mean we've talked about breaking up out the Bakada arsenal every now and then. But like who the fuck threw that right in the middle of like three of their guys? Probably some dumb PRT officer named Bert or something. I was gonna say, was it was it Kidwin? God damn it, Kidwin. <laughs> <laughs> Just fumble like pulls the pin, fumbles the grenade, and then like chucks it like two feet in front of him, right into yeah. the back of his teammates. It's yeah. so macabre, too, that it's just there. Like, you can see them. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. cloudy, and it's not super, like, crystal clear, but they're, they're there. You can, you can make out the shapes. Mm. And that's Ugh. sick, to be honest. Like, they're, they're going to be there. 
Yeah, are... there's some horrifying imagery in this series. Yeah. God. Not on topic yeah. at all, but you said you threw it into the back of his teammates. It made me think of a story when uh, I was young. I went paintballing <laughs> and we were both, me and my teammate were right behind like this car. And uh, yeah, his, his he accidentally shot me like right in the butt at a point blank. And so yeah, I'd share that story. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Did You're you have welcome. a welt on your butt then? It hurt. I don't remember, but it was very surprising and upsetting. <laughs> and I really wanted to shoot him back. You, you, didn't, you didn't shoot him back? No, I was nicer then. You're you're a better man than I. <laughs> I believe that it was an accident, which I don't know if it really was. But anyways, grenade to the friends. Yeah, yep. grenade to the friends. Yeah. Also, no, it's, the it's, quote it's when horrifying. Taylor leaves, uh, you guys, uh, like, you guys just greased the wheels, I suppose. Like. Mm actually take you know levels of personal responsibility while also recognizing that you know other people suck <laughs> like it's mm-hmm. not your fault i did make these decisions but you guys were not helpful in the slightest true <laughs> <laughs> yeah tell it like it is mhm uh let's see uh, uh finally a real division between the prt and heroes this was something big in the story that I have not really felt. Um, but to me, PRT and uh, capes, like the hero capes, basically synonymous. Like, mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. When you say the PRT, the organization under which the heroes and the wards fall under, and wards are just junior division. Right. But I guess the truth is it's the. Pr- Protectorate and the wards both fall under the jurisdiction and like ownership uh, by the PRT. And this Mm -hmm. is the first time we've seen, and uh, you know, once again, this is all just how it's felt in the story. This feels like the first time there's finally a division between the non-powered PRT, as as it were, and the people who have powers that are capes working for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And it is nice to see that. Yeah, it's nice to see, I don't know, getting into the complexity of the organization, which we haven't really done, but realizing, okay, there's different groups, different divisions, protectorate, PRT. Yeah, just the differences between those is really interesting. Uh, which is why, again, it was such a big deal of like, oh, the head of the PRT has to be a non-powered person. Turns out it was Alexandria. And that just feels like a betrayal of the whole setup of the system, this idea that right. non-powered humans have power over the heroes. It was all just kind of a farce. Yeah. Yeah. Because isn't, isn't the whole idea of having, of it basically like, well, we don't want capes in the position of power because they could so easily ab- use and abuse the power to manipulate the system and manipulate the way that, you know, we we function and we work and stuff. And then, like, I mean, isn't that the whole idea that, like, you already have so much power, we don't want you also running the show. Like, someone has to mm-hmm. be over you. And then, like, yeah, exactly. who's at the top of the food chain? Well, it's Alexandria. Like, God damn it. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> um... Uh, I mean, a good convo between them, Flechette, and Miss Militia. But uh, Flechette being like, wah, 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 complaining. And then Taylor giving some sound advice because like, yeah, if anybody knows, it's me. (laughs) (laughs) True. I did like that conversation. Or that part of it, rather. Yeah. Um, Finally being given the benefit of the doubt just give it to me literally one time. Mm. Well, I stand by every time we dealt with the Slaughterhouse Nine and then Echidna, like Taylor, Skitter specifically, but the Undersiders in general have come to the PRT, have come to Miss Militia of all people multiple times 
to be like, yo, this is what's up. And they're like, no, every time. Mm-hmm. So like, just she's just like begging them one time. Just give me this one time where you will just give me the benefit of the doubt. I'm not even asking you to like go and, you know, do anything major. Just give me the benefit of the doubt one time. That's all I ever needed. And, you know, this feels like it's going to work finally. Mm -hmm. Um, Finally. and And then, yeah, it's finally happened. And then last but not least, uh, what the fuck does a court even do? <laughs> Listen, he does his best. Okay. He like does his best. he does his best, but I like I can't imagine him doing anything more criminal than holding like fundraising galas. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, that's what I imagined his criminal like Because, you know, every place he goes to, he's getting a really nice house. He's decorating it with, like, minimalist but super tasteful art. Everything is perfectly in its place. You've got all of the people that work for him are literally in their, like, cool masks. It's, you know, it's artsy but super elegant and, uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's rich Bond villain vibes with, you know, super OCD. What is he doing there other than hosting galas for people to come over and like donate money to him? And, you know, just wander around at a cocktail party. Like, (laughs) there's nothing else that I can see him doing. He's a planner. (laughs) For what? Can you see him planning a drug deal? (laughs) Just be like, uh, drugs Drugs are so gauche. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, what is he selling? Guns? My like, headcanon is that he works as a consultant for other criminal gangs. Mm. So, yeah. gangs say, you know, they're trying to do this. They want to rule that. They want to steal this. They want to, you know, whatever the case may be. I want to steal the Mona Lisa. And they <laughs> hire a court to I want to steal the yeah. moon. I, you know what? Yeah. Honestly, that, I, I like that. Yeah. I mean, if he's just selling plans for stuff. Yeah. He's doing well, I like he that. just hands I like you a, his... a double thick binder. Yeah. Because I like that in his interlude that we got uh, last arc where he's like, he's solved everything. Just he also s- realized yeah. that it's not going to matter because nobody's going to actually implement any of it. No. So it's, <laughs> it's like the most d- depressing power of all time. You know, <laughs> it, it yeah, literally is. Of... He basically is the Grinch. Jim Carrey's live action Grinch. He's got mm-hmm. his own little his his hideout where he just broods all day. <laughs> Solve world Solve hunger. World hunger. No one. Yeah, one. <laughs> or or give everyone a binder and no one's going to read it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was that was why he left the the PRT because I mean, we're kind of going back to that arc. I think we talked about this already, but the whole yeah. like it's like, "Hey, I can actually make this whole system work better." And the PRT just said, "Nah, can, can you do some more Excel spreadsheets for us, though? Thanks. <laughs> that, yep. Like, if that's anybody's villain origin story, most relatable, honestly. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> he is the millennial. Yeah. That is me at every camp I ever worked at. Like, all right, here's my <laughs> list of things that would improve everybody's lives. Let's see if we can get any of them, you know, to pass. Improved, yeah. Ah, like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much. Can you go uh, pick up the extra soccer balls off the pitch? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just have such a servant's heart. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No! Uh, what a giver. <laughs> They're just being cock-blocked by the church. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm what a, what a just servant, record, yeah. servant leader. Just sitting in the copy room, just like stupid PRT, just listen to my good ideas. Just Making me do copies all day. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, relatable. Any other thoughts so, on uh, Why did we get onto five? a cord? I what just was a note about what the <laughs> fuck does he do? <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> like he's a villain. We know that, but we don't know how. 
in, like, in in the conversation with Miss Militia, they they do mention that like, oh, when you're working with a cord, like as long as you can keep a cord on a short leash, like we won't have a problem. And she's like, like don't I worry, think, we got what it. What is it? The only thing I can imagine him being a villain, like that makes him villainous, is that he accidentally kills people. Like, and I say accidentally, like he does it, but like he gets really pissy at somebody and has them killed. Like that's why people are after him. Otherwise, if they could just keep people away from him and just, you know, I think he would be fine. Mm -hmm. Potentially. I like Jacob's head cannon though. That's good. Yeah, no, that is a pretty fun one. It's like the bank heist went wrong. Uh, did you follow the binder I gave you? Yeah, yeah, we did everything, <laughs> including the subsection about where, like, you had to wear this bright stick. colored outfit, and they were like, "Yeah, well, we thought that was optional. None of it was optional." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No uh, refunds. <laughs> no refunds. Uh, non refundable deposit. It's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's why. That's why he could never get. That's why he like that would plan would never work as a business model because everybody would keep fucking up and then blame him. And he's like, "Look, I don't know how to tell you this. Follow it to the letter. It will work. Stop yeah, making right. deviations." Yep. Is that why they just hire the Accord team? Like, like we oh. talked about, maybe he just makes oh. plans for people. Like, well, what if he just instead of being like, "Oh yes, here's a three ring, three ring binder." of how to steal the Mona Lisa. He's like, yes, you pay us a lot of money and we handle it for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it that makes a lot options. more sense. As we like we can do it, we'll true. do it right. True. But it's going like to cost it. you a lot more. Also, much like somebody else we'll meet later in this section, um, I got a good sense that Accord's probably a great investor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like oh, he probably sure. doesn't even need to turn to a life of crime to make a lot no. of money. He just yeah. saw it as the faster way to achieve his goals. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I don't think like I don't think he does the crime. I think the crime is that he just gets really fed up with some dude on the street and is like citrine murder. Murder <laughs> that's that why man. The, otherwise, he like he literally is like, ah, I've made a lot of money in the stock markets, He's which really you know rich. I used to be on the lookout for. That was my job. Was looking for stock manipulation. And then this. Also, we have yet to have a court actually kill somebody. Like, we know that that they turned over Cody or whatever his name is to a court, but, like, we never actually saw that happen. And he, he threatens a lot that he's going to just, like, murder somebody off the, just because, like, like, I could have murdered you right here. And it's like, okay, well... You didn't send. We're all still standing. And like at one point, he said like during his interlude, he's like, "And I could push Citrine down the stairs," but he doesn't. It's like I actually really want to see him just like murder somebody. I would it's like an that. Interesting very much. point, Alan brings up. Mm -hmm. Twenty-one point six. Twenty-one point six. Okay. We get into a fight now after some some kind of lower chill moments. We we had the fight earlier, but I didn't even think of that as a fight. It was over so quickly. Uh, in this one, the undersiders and the ambassadors take out the teeth, uh, which is very interesting. And Cherish makes a not appearance, but uh, brings down the butcher, which seems like a really bad idea. But okay. Uh, and Taylor spends some time with Bitch in her territory with her doggos and her minions. The diggy dogs. First, she takes out the eye, then the teeth. Yep. Um, mm. Okay. Eyes and teeth. My vote for creepiest power of like the last five arcs, including Echidna, is to, uh, I forget his name now, who can machine gun out dumb oh. bodies of himself. Oh, yes. spree. Spree. Spree, that's right. So, <laughs> it is just horrifyingly creepy. Yeah. And I loved every second of, of them trying to deal with him. <laughs> and, and also, that's my uh, that's my uh, Gilbert Gottfried fan cast. That's that's who <laughs> I want. Just him layering as. the voice over and <laughs> yeah, over again. Just just, his, oh yeah, my gosh! It's screaming. all them yelling as it. they're running. I, I love too that they get dumber the first, like the longer they exist. Yeah. They're just yeah. like, like they run out and 
Skitter's like, some of them have guns, but uh, by the time they get to us, they're not smart enough to use them. <laughs> God <laughs> dang. What? So what an unfortunate power. So close to being useful. Yeah, it's like... So it's close. Like, yeah, ah, so far. Almost. <laughs> All right. Next section. Oh, we'd list, we'll touch briefly on uh, on Cherish Killing Butcher. Because that was yeah. a pretty... A pretty fun moment. Yeah. I was trying to remember because I remember that catching me off guard when I first read it and was waiting for it this time and it still kind of caught me off guard. It's, it's Yeah, because uh, they get to the 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 area. I, like, I remember them like somehow luring her out on a boat or something, but no, they just kind of get her near the beach and you're like... Well, they get her to the beach. Yeah. Yeah, I thought she was further out, but you know. Isn't she like under a buoy? Somewhere. Yeah, like they have her, they have her marked. Like they know where she is. And she has like a frame of not a frame of reference. She has like a a circle of influence. Yeah. But like they get to the very edge of it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is I I kind of totally forgot. I was like, why are they going oh, to yeah. this place I until had the no, moment it I happened? I had no fucking clue. And I was just like, what the yeah, heck? I was like, yeah, happened? we got to get in the yeah, yeah, and then Regent explained it, and I was like, eh, yeah. "Like, yeah, we got to get in the water somehow. Like, how or when are we going to get there?" And then she dies. I'm like, "Oh, oh." Well, she like okay. she does it, and I'm like, well, "Are we? What are we doing?" And then I remembered, and I was like, "They're they they're not using Cherish. Like that that would be so stupid of them to use Cherish and to give more powers to Cherish." And and then th- there it was, and I was like. All I could think of was like, this is going to come back and bite us in the ass later. Like, I know, I like, I don't remember, but I know for a, for a non-fact that, that, that this is going to come back and bite us. Like, it has to. Like, how can it not come back and bite us in the ass? Because like, because, mm. uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's what, it definitely is one of those things where it's like, uh, Butcher felt, she's obviously very strong, very strong yeah. enemy, but definitely felt beatable compared to what they fought. And oh, it's for like, sure. you, you opted for maybe the worst solution here. Like, if you wanted her dead, I feel like there was better ways to do that. Right, right. Well, and it, it's not just because they need her dead, right? It's because of the way the Butcher powers work. Whoever kills yeah, exactly. her inherits the powers. Exactly. So they can't have just, you know, they don't want to hire Coil oh, Sniper to true. shoot her because then he's the Butcher. Uh, yeah. As good as that would be, and as easy as it would be for him to do it, right? Um, like we've joked about, not the with their superhero. danger sense. Yeah, it's true. She does have the danger true. sense. Have danger sense would have been difficult. But yeah, so they needed to kill her or remove her from the city, which you know, no way to do that probably besides kill her. And they needed someone to kill her who they didn't really care about. Yeah, Cherish. It's true. That's true. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, it just suck, Cherish. I I forgot yeah. about the whole whoever kills her gets her powers. That makes that makes it more complicated. But yes, it makes sense. Man, Butcher feels like a like a SPC uh, story. Yeah, if you guys ever read those, it's just like, mm-hmm. yeah, how do you mm-hmm. deal with this? A lot of fun. Yeah, and and to be fair, the point you guys brought up though, um, you guys are all in accord with accord because he brings up the same point of like. That was real dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a choice that you made and was not wise, perhaps. But maybe Accord was happy. Oh, oh boy, new problems to solve. <laughs> Let's get to work. Be terrible in a relationship. <laughs> oh, Just God. creating drama so he has more problems to solve. P- pretty much. Well, and that's the thing, because don't, don't, the, don't the problems have to be more complex for him? Like, the more complex they are, the, the more easier the solution. He... Yeah, the, yeah, like the more, the quicker he can How solve can it. How can I get my coworker to invite my wife into a three-way so that I can <laughs> catch them in just at the right time? <laughs> 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 then I'll have divorce settlement paperwork to work through, and that's fabulous. <laughs> that's fabulous. That's a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking more of it in the context of like, you know where the wife's like, I don't need you to fix my problems. I just need you to listen. Like a court would be like, well, if Janet keeps stealing your lunch at work, well, then you should. And she's like, no, I just need you to to listen, to sympathize with me about Janet. 
He's like, don't fix them. And he's like, I literally can't not fix them, honey. We could kill Janet. And she's like, no. (laughs) (laughs) But hear me out, sweetie. Hear me out. Hear me out. We poison Janet slowly. (laughs) You know how easy it would be? so easy to make these things look like accidents, honey. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Oh, man. Anywho. <laughs> uh, shall we move on? Or are we still? Yeah. We, I mean, there's I do, a lot that happens in this chapter. Yeah. So I, I do like want to talk about the powers that we see, right? So we talked about yeah, Spree, yeah, yeah. talked about Butcher. Um, who are the other ones? I'm trying to remember what they do. Um, well, there's one that has like minor uh, blood bending. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then um, somebody oh, else creates. She is one of the new ones um, that Accord has just added the blood bending one, yeah. right? I thought no. I, I think the blood bender was, was was the teeth. Uh, oh, is she in the teeth? Yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. With all the names, I I got a little is, confused yeah. a couple of times. <laughs> a little confused. Like what um, side we're on? There's also the one that creates essentially the fiberglass splinters of like shields in thin air. Like mm-hmm. can fill mm-hmm. an area oh, with oh, oh. very tiny. The yeah. The uh, uh, vex. 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 Yeah. 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 It was the air with just what I assume is literally like if you were ever fallen in fiberglass as a kid, you know, <laughs> like insulation yeah. in the attic. It's just I like do, walking I, through that for an entire area. Yeah. So, yeah. So the other men- members are so there's Butcher 14. Animos can transform into a four legged creature just a bit smaller than bitches' dogs. And while he's in that form, he has a scream that temporarily nullifies powers, yes, right? Yes. So I remember right. that because it, they talk yes. about they talk about right. having to take him out quickly because mm-hmm. they couldn't like they had to take him out from long range Ooh. before he could affect them. I thought that right. was interesting. And he he tries to take out one of the dogs at one point and they're like, Well, it's actually not the dog's power, it's bitch's power, so it doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. Um right. and then yeah, Vex has the tiny razor sharp force fields with collective cumulative resistance. The one um the one that I, I liked though was uh hemorrhagia. This isn't a power moment, but when hemorrhagia, Taylor hemorrhagia. Hemorrha- hemorrhagia? Hem- yeah. hemorrhagia. 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 Like hemorrhage? Yeah. Hemorrhagia? Okay. Whatever her name is, Hemi. <laughs> um <laughs> Hemi. <laughs> I do like it's just this little personal moment where, like, she's made chili for everybody, and then the oh, bugs start yeah. crawling in, and she puts the lid on the pot and just like, hell no, not my chili. <laughs> my chili. <laughs> Which just, Taylor has a good reason for too. She's like, you, you get, you, it's all, it's the little things. Mm-hmm. It's the little things that add up to be like moral morale killers, basically. Because it's the it's little like, things that make ruin it special, a nice like meal. chili after a good day's like, work. <laughs> I felt so bad. Not, not my There's goddamn worse chili. Than, like spending all this time and effort on food, and then it getting completely just destroyed. Ah, that's that kind of sucks. Yeah, it was yeah. just a fun little personal moment. And then who was it? Uh, Vex, who's like on the toilet and is like or Spree or Vex, whichever one of them it is, and they're like bumbling with their pants, trying to. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no! While I'm pooping. <laughs> <laughs> they got to make the decision about which articles of clothing you're grabbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, exactly. the bug's like dragging away this piece of armor. He like looks back. He, she, I can't remember who it is. Looks back like longingly at the one piece of armor like, damn it, I really liked that armband. And like that has to keep running. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a funny, it's just like those funny little things. I also wanted to talk about though, the new heroes that, um, that Accord has acquired. Yeah. Uh, say that five times fast. A court is acquired. Yeah, yeah, yes, um, heroes. We'll put that in heavy quotation. Heroes. Uh, did I say yeah. heroes? I meant I meant capes. Yeah. Like capes, his powers. Yeah. Um, I thought they were interesting. So, um, one of them dies. Codex. Yeah. Very what was Codex's power? <laughs> Who cares? That's <laughs> so what it sad. is. Inter- what did they do? No, it was interesting. It was interesting. <laughs> it was interesting how they died. Yeah, I mean, uh, she got shot just through the comp- neck. The ultimate compound bow Ugh. through the neck. Also, we can straight straight up D D. This is like whatever the Titan bow or the old composite bow from three point five, where you can put your mm-hmm. Dex modifier into the damage. Except mm-hmm. Butcher's Dex modifier is like plus twenty. Yeah, jeez, that was really and cool never misses. Team. Always true strike. Yeah. So yeah, so she was a blaster thinker hybrid. 
She can strike mm-hmm. anyone within its area of effect with permanent brain damage and memory loss. And memory loss, yep, yep. In, yep, in yep. exchange for granting her a temporary boost of power. So, kind of interesting. Jeez. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have her, we have uh, Legia, Lizard Tail, and Jack Light. So, kind of some oh. interesting... And then we get to see Citrine's power as well, which is really cool, of just sort of the nullifying zone where she yeah, can kind yeah. of determine and reshape reality to fit what she needs it to be. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I loved I loved because Citrine and Othello are the two uh, ambassadors who survive the Nines attack on and on uh, on on the ambassadors. And mm-hmm. in the back of my mind, when you're reading that, you're like, "Ooh, that's kind of cool!" Like already, that's some good world building because you're like, "What do they do? You know, how did they how did they survive <laughs> the Othello nine? hid in the other world? That's how he did." That. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, hey, don't knock my boy Othello. I love him, but like, <laughs> but it was cool getting to finally see them in action a little bit and just sort of getting a taste of mm-hmm. how they operate. It's kind of neat. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I did like Othello was basically like Taylor looks over and he's just standing in the back with his hands in his pockets. She's like, he's <laughs> yeah. doing something. Something. What is <laughs> what is he up to? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So some cool powers. Uh Jack Light's got his little lights that God, what do they do? They do dumb things. <laughs> they jack. I, they jack <laughs> light. Yep. Just lightly though. Um <laughs> Oh, it's a space warping thing, right? So it's a space warping thing. It's kind of cool. Um, you've got Lizard Tail, who's got like healing powers. Uh, Lizard Tail li- has more. It's, it's like, like healing, but it's also healed. like an or like a heal aura thing too, like because yeah. he can heal yeah, yeah, yeah. The people around him as well. Yeah, and then uh, Legia Legia has the water bending, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is cool. You would bending. think Liquid. that of all those people, Lizard Tail feels like the name that is like Lizard Tail and Jack Light, to be honest, do not feel like names that Accord picked out. Right. They feel <laughs> beneath him in terms of their crudity. And I feel like given, you know, Codex, Lygia, you know, like he would have sprung for something in like Greek. <laughs> You know, yeah. and yep. and he went with Lizard Tail. Did he get? To, did he pick their names, or did they get to pick their own name? Uh, like he's do you think he powers. lets his? I was gonna say. I mean, do you I think he it. lets them pick their outfits and their oh, names. Oh, not their outfits, but can, we, he one hundred percent dresses them. Well, I was gonna say we know for a fact he does. That's one. Of, he's like, it's said. It's not like we don't think it's an actual cape power. He's just really good at it. But he designs all of their costumes and hand makes them. Heck so yeah. we we know he dresses them. <laughs> he, yeah. His team looks the way he wants them to. <laughs> and their masks are super freaking cool too. Because I for, I yeah. forgot about that uh, until this arc again. But like uh, his mask is like a bunch of it's like metal, but it's all it all blinks and moves with him. So like when he closes yeah. his eyes, the mask shutters closed, and when he opens them, they open back up. So like that's super cool that he also makes them all himself. Like, that's, it's very impressive. Yeah. yeah. I, you know what it honestly was probably, Alan? Panacea was taken already. <laughs> so, it's like, all right, well, what, there what are, regenerates? Oh, my God. There's other... Lizard Tail oh, does feel regenerates? like a placeholder name. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> am, I mean, am um, I stupid that I just now got the Lizard Tail thing? That Lizard's Tails grow back? <laughs> <laughs> the, you said regenerate, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> that track." Yeah, like, like on top of that. Okay, it's lizard tail, but lizard tail feels like it's something that an individual might have. Like, what's your ability? Oh, I can just you know, you cut off my limbs, I regenerate them. Okay, lizard tail. It's still crude, but feels more fitting to the name. But to have an aura of regeneration feels like it should be cooler name, medicinal. Like yeah. Panacea, you know, would also be an appropriate name for that. But, you know, something medical or, here's you know, like sanctuary, else. some some name yeah. that involves a place, maybe. When he's got yeah. this Celtic knot mask, that sounds really cool. So cool. Oh, my God. But so cool. 
I don't know. Yeah, was, I, I think you're right. Was he just feeling wondered... in that style that day? Like he was like, hmm, I'm feeling old. You know, I, you know, some of these I've gone more modern. I've got more chic. Uh, this I'm thinking ancient. We're going ancient. I'm thinking oh, leather yeah. tattoos. Yeah, I don't know. Even I mean, like maybe like give I mean, him a name like Grendel or something. I don't know. Something mythological. Oh, gross. <laughs> not Grendel, Alan. Grendel, not Grendel. I know, I know, I know what you said. I still think Grendel is gross. Oh, I mean, he is, yeah. <laughs> Listen, sometimes the inspiration on my mythology. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. You you reacted so violently. I was like, uh, okay, uh. <laughs> Grendel. <laughs> sometimes the inspiration just leaves you, you know. Mm-hmm. Tolkien created an entire language and then assigned names for characters based on language variants within his imaginary language and then <laughs> named the tree with a beard, tree beard. So like, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you just, True. you just got to move name. on. <laughs> <Best> name. Name. <laughs> he just, he just, yeah, that was oh, the yeah. placeholder name and he had to do the, forgot to do the uh, control <laughs> find. Control F. Replace. Yeah. <laughs> control F replace. Yeah, exactly. I imagine maybe that's the same. Jack Light, I kind of get because it <laughs> it feels like a Will of the Wisp thing, but easier to say than Will of the Wisp, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I kind of get that one, but yeah, Lizard Tail does feel a little like uh, out of place. I agree. It's funny. Yeah, I imagine and, like look up any Greek. Like I imagine that there is a Greek healing temple that was probably mostly just taking bath salts. But like, how is one of those not his name? You know. <laughs> uh huh. I mean, Labyrinth, something like Labyrinth, right. Sanctuary, you know, in that vibe of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. We yeah. get it. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I, do, I, have to, I, have to, I have to say it because they're already typing. Yes, I know Treebeard is just the name the common folk give him. It's not his actual name. <laughs> and, I re- and I'm going to fight back with that. He still decided to name the trolls in The Hobbit, William Burt. And I forget the third, the third one's name. <laughs> so my point still stands. William Burton uh, Smegma. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and also, Nick yeah. also knows that Ooh. there probably wasn't a control F back then when he was writing it. So he, we also know that. Yes, it that was, was a joke, Jay. Michael. Yeah, it was, I know. I'm just, <laughs> Listen, you know, you got to get, get ahead of it. They were already typing. You, really you got to you you really get do. ahead of it. Just in case. Got to cover our bases. Exactly. We have right, romantic, but we we know we, we have, have we, we have we know things. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Some things. All right. Are we on to chapter seven? Yes. So uh, the final the final uh, chapter chapter seven. Taylor visits Tattletail's lair, uh, and they they have a a quick talk. Lisa tells her to give him hell, and Taylor heads off to the PRT and surrender. Damn. Yeah. Mm. I like this chapter a lot. It's, I like it that it gives us such a great insight into uh, Tattletail's lair, which I feel like we really, or or her thought process as well, which I feel like we really haven't gotten to see all that, see all that much. Um, So I really do like that a lot. Uh, and kind of seeing it through Taylor's eyes as well is really, yeah. really interesting. I like how their friendship has developed and you can kind of see how far it's gotten to where no words are really spoken at the end, but both know that the other one knows, you know, like it's sort of clued in there with yeah. the whole like give him hell at the end. Like, um, it's it's just a really subtle, well, not that subtle, but in universe, it's subtle communication between them that uh, it says yeah. so much. It's just, it's a great little great little moment. Yeah. Although I don't want to gloss over that <laughs> there's a time traveling cape canonically in Worm. Yeah. Just want to point that out. <laughs> the fuck. I, Wow. I did not remember that, and maybe I have no memory if they ever show up again. Truly, I completely forget. But I do like the thought that there is a cape that is capable of time travel. Just casually throwing that out there. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> back up. What? What are we talking about? <laughs> they, while she's going through the cape stuff on the, all, the, all the boards, there's a cape yeah. that can time travel. 
Yeah, just noting oh. all of all of Lisa's notes. She's like going through lists. She just grabs one group, yada yada, led by I forget the cape's name, led by so and so, capable of oh, time travel. Oh, oh, the um, it's not Haven. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, there's the the watchdogs. No, no, no watch. it's like a it's a it's a simple little. I'm gonna look it up again. But she even has the thought, which which was I will hundred percent throw a billion dollars behind. This was just Wildbo just writing, not in character. Just like, because <laughs> Taylor's like, I don't even want to think about how complex that could get. <laughs> and like, just moves on. <laughs> like, that yeah. was wild. That was wild, Bo, just saying, we're not, we're not going to get into it. It just exists. Accept it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Time travel. Yeah. Getting flirted with by your mother. It's a good time. Well. Okay. All right. Let's not get ahead no, of ourselves. No, no, Jacob, you said you wanted Back to the Future. <laughs> I did, but I want to be Doc. Um, yeah. I want I want the time traveling dog. <laughs> Not the mom. Just to confirm. I mean, the mom doesn't time travel. Just just to <laughs> confirm. <laughs> just to so, confirm. no mom. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just double checking. Uh Shall, are we? Are we? We feeling good about moving on, or how we? How we I've feeling? Been feeling <laughs> we got two interludes, go. and I'm not gonna lie. I'm 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 fading. I have Let's had out no fast. notes for the past three chapters. It's a Let's it's go. a chill. It's a chill arc. But yeah, it's, it's been very just like okay, stuff happened. Yeah, like it's a big deal story wise, but it just kind of yeah. I don't know. It doesn't doesn't hit like some of the other ones where you're like, oh yeah, this is the stuff. I have a lot of things to say. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Number Man. Any thoughts on old Number Man? Yep. Uh, the okay. next interlude is the Number Man. Uh, we get a little bit of his life and a uh, little look into Cauldron. Um, he prevents an escape, looks at an old costume, and thinks back on an old friend. Mm, this bastard. <laughs> mm. That's my note for the whole chapter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool power. Uh, Definitely an unexpected application of a power, I would say. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you, you hear the name, the number man, and you're like, all right, nerd. You know, speaking <laughs> of people who, like, go do some Excel sheets. Um, yeah. But his application, first we see him just absolutely wrecking groups with the touch of a button, right? Like, yeah. that's his whole thing. He's like, hmm... This group's gathering funds. They're being problematic. I'll slow them down. Click, click. Yeah. Okay, they're slowed down for probably two weeks at least, if not longer. You know, it's like, oh, that was, yeah. So just the way he's able to, and the fact, okay, the fact that Cauldron has access to all of this stuff, like he on his little computer, wherever he is in some universe, some alternative earth, has access to like every bank in the world. What the hell, yeah. Cauldron? <laughs> yeah, they crazy. Well, like maybe, maybe I was rushing over this, or maybe it's just foggy in my memory. But like the implication I got from all this like fun stuff was not that they were directly linking into the banks, and maybe I'm wrong, but that he is really, really good at manipulating, like you know, just generally like stocks and funds and where things go, and be. Because he's really good with those numbers, he can slow down. Oh my gosh, like there's money going in here. I can cut off their revenue stream by selling this and doing that. That's the implication I got. I don't know. It felt like he had a direct touch to some bank accounts. Yeah, because he was he was know. putting stuff in and then like leaving it just enough for people to like notice and then like would shift it again. It's probably a little like he would, he would make transactions in, in the names of the groups he was messing yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the other thing we know is that almost everybody uses the number man. So maybe he just has direct access because everybody uses the number man as their, as bank their account, account manager. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah, so could, if he doesn't like you, be. he doesn't in like he doesn't openly like, oh, let me fuck you up. Like it's just, you know, you're not making money as fast as you were a second ago. But I do also love the application of his, his powers in his fight as well. With, to be fair, what also sounded like kind of a cool cape power, um, 
this guy who's been he's been distorted like his body's in multiple different universes at the same time, but he can generate like massive attacks where basically it's him. He has a super strength and he can punch in like every area in a certain area because it's like every version of him is punching in a different like part of the world. Mm. It is a very weird power, but it's a very cool idea. I mean, mm-hmm. it sucks that he had to die, but you know, number man's got a number. Yeah. yeah. Can't mm-hmm. stop the numbers. Nope. The numbers just keep coming. And I do I do love his like see the matrix kind of thing, you know, where he's like mm. Yeah. I can calculate your exact move. I know exactly where you'll hit right now. It's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, I'm, right. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. 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 It is It is a power I have written many stories as a child about. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Essentially just a, an assassin hooked up to a supercomputer so that, that, you know, he does all the math to, you know, avoid things and do other stuff. Nice. It's cool. But yeah, um, he's being switched out for Contessa. Contessa's coming mm-hmm. in. He's going out. We also see he was Harbinger. He was a member of the Nine. Oh, yeah. And that was a whole helped, an OG. Yeah, yeah, he was one of the OGs. Helped uh, Jacob. <laughs> uh, helped Jacob <sighs> kill Classic villain. <laughs> King. Classic Jacob move. Damn yeah. it. Oh, his name needed to be Alan. Come on. We had this. It was right there. Also, no, he do. saves the cool villain names for people like Jacob, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we do get also get a, an, another name drop with Gray Boy. Oh, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that, that Gray Boy's important, but I don't remember why. Precious Kate Gray Boy. Yeah, like he says, like clearly there's a lot of animosity there, but like I don't remember why. Like I know I should, but I don't. I'm upset. (laughs) (laughs) No spoilers. has taken another victim. No no spoilers, but I think the implication is that Grey Boy, at least in in the past and with this, he's been Grey. He's as powerful as Siberian kind of level. Oh. Um, yeah, like he's, he is, if I remember right, and this isn't a spoiler, I don't think, but he's in a list of the like most absurdly dangerous pair of humans of all time with Siberian. Yeah, he's oh. definitely, he's an, he's an S class threat of, of in, in it of himself. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, interesting character though. He gets dropped, name dropped again. Um, I do think it was interesting. They were talking about like, I really wish we could have used Siberian against the the Endbringers to see like what effect that would have. Mm-hmm. Like, could the Endbringers have affected Siberian? But sadly, Manton was cuckoo. Yeah, <laughs> what a bummer. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, it was, it was just kind of like a. It felt kind of like a lore dump, in, but in the best yeah, way, yeah. right? I was. Oh, I mean, I and those are honestly some of my favorite interludes. Are just the lore dumps, like li- li- nice little breaks from the main story. Get some world building. Mm-hmm. Move on. Yeah, exactly. And we get some more. We get another little one with uh, with Perry in next. Yeah. So the the last interlude of Arc Twenty One is Perian's. Uh, we get a little bit of information about her background, her early life, the nature of her powers. Uh, and then the undersiders meet up to discuss Skitter's surrender. Uh, a cord shows up, and then um, Arian takes Flechette on as her lieutenant. We have a little switcheroo there. Arian's a fun character. I kind I of wish really like we her. the story allowed us. Like it's so packed as it is, but she's one of those characters that I do wish we had more of up to this point. Yeah. Like she's in the story a bit, but she's a neat character. Yeah, I I like her a lot. I think her power is really cool and I like that she's she's like so uncertain about being with the undersiders and she has to take like she she doesn't really know what she what she wants to do. And like we see that even more here in this interlude where, you know, she she was on a path and she left the path and she started something else and she was 
doing fashion design and it's just like she hasn't been able to like find the 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 space where she feels comfortable yet like she's still trying to figure it out and i i like that i i like that she doesn't know what she's supposed to do mhm yeah her power is really interesting too and she even like recognizes she's like i feel like i have this affinity for cloth and light material but i feel like that's not what my power was really for so she mm-hmm. even has this awareness of like I'm using this, but I don't really feel like I'm using this, right? Like, she's not really yeah, enjoying the full extent of what her powers could do, which I think is a really interesting bit of self-awareness. I feel like a lot of people probably get their powers and just assume, well, this must be all there is to it. Like, skitter with bugs or bitch with dogs. But, like, has a bitch tried to use her power on a person? Has she tried yeah, to use like, it on, like, a cat? You know, like, like other mm-hmm, life forms? Right. Has Parian tried to use her powers on other things. You know, and Skitter even mentions like she can control crabs, but she doesn't really, you know, she's not crab girl. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a totally different story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, you know, that's that's a great alternate universe worm fan fiction, right? Have <laughs> have Skitter become what would it be? Mollusk, the claw? maybe, instead of Skitter the Claw. Already for a fact that there is a crab fan fiction of Taylor. <laughs> really? That's awesome. Yeah. Good for you. That's random amazing. internet person. Don't good, that. No, so don't good for me as if it's my fault. Like, no, no, no. Good, <laughs> for, good for you, good random for, internet person. I meant. Yeah, for writing it. Yeah. Not you, Alan, for having read Not it. Not you for telling us about it. <laughs> Unless you did write it. You did nothing, you useless son of a... <laughs> Would you love me if I were a worm? <laughs> no, but maybe if you were a crab. God damn it. So low, Brian. <laughs> Brian, no. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I I hate to see the that that talk with the undersiders as they're all like coming to terms with the fact of what Skitter just did, like that she just turned herself in, and uh, yeah, it, it that that conversation with all of them sitting around together is really really kills me. And uh this is the part where Hannah's going to cry. Uh the when when bitch shows up and she's she's so sure that Taylor has a plan and she's so sure that she's going to come back and there's like this this blind trust and faith that Taylor well, Taylor's smarter than me. Like, she's, I've never understood her plans. This is just another plan, right? Like, this is just another thing that Taylor's doing and she'll be back by the end of the, like, don't even worry about it. Like, she's so, she's so, like, faithful and true and loyal. And, like, the, it gives me, it gives me, like, that, that, like, terrible image of, like, a dog that's, like, sitting at its owner's grave, like, just waiting. Like, of course you'll come back. You always come back. Like, you always, like, I I trust you. And of course you're going to not leave me here. Like, that was, that was the vibe that I got with this whole section of, like, bitch has come so far with her relationship with Taylor. And and now Taylor has left. And she has, you know, whatever her her reasoning might be. And I have no, I don't remember what happens in the next arc. I have no idea if Taylor has a plan or not. But like from where we are now, like it sounds like like Taylor's turned herself in because she thinks that this is the 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 best way to to go about saving the city and saving her friends. And and Rachel's just sitting there like, it's fine. Taylor will be back. Like mm. she always comes back, you know? And that 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 fucked me up reading that bit. I'm just... Yeah, it's rough. I'm just... It makes me sad. Yeah. And it just means that when Taylor doesn't come back, it's just going to be all the more painful for bitch to trust people again. You know? Yeah. 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 Now that was a... That was a one of those hard moments where you're like, the amount, you know, the, and this is really an interesting sort of full circle from their story, right? From, yeah, bitch not trusting Taylor, fighting her the first time they meet, Taylor earning her trust, then 
bitch's feelings of betrayal, tries to betray Taylor. They, you know, Taylor kind of alphas her. And then they have such an understanding where even in this arc, we see Taylor says, can I borrow a dog? Yeah. And bitch just says, you going to take care of it? And she's like, of course, I'll do this, this, and this. And she's like, okay, go for it. And just mm-hmm. that, that deep trust is just, yeah. yeah, is very much, you know, you could, you could feel that. And I think Parian, Parian's a great perspective character from this, right? To be yeah. like, you know, it's like, it's like if something really bad happens to a friend's family while you're over at their house, but you don't know them that well. Mm-hmm. Like when you were a kid, that, yeah. that's not ever happened to me, but you're just like, I don't feel like I should be watching this. Like, I don't feel like I should be here right now. Like I'm intruding <laughs> somehow. Like yeah. And I, yeah. And I think that, that that awkward feeling of intrusion is perfect for what, what, Wild Bill is trying to achieve. I will say we do know a little bit about why Taylor left. Um, and it's because of the note from Dinah. Yeah. Basically saying, mm-hmm. cut ties, I'm sorry. Implying somehow from Dinah's perspective, she knows that if Taylor stays with the Undersiders, it won't be good in the long run. Mm-hmm. We don't know what that means. But we do know that that's what she's trying to do. Mm-hmm. And it's not like you can explain that to somebody and be like, "Well, I gotta cut ties with you guys because because a you know, she said told so." Me because because if you tell her, then it's like, "Well, you're not really cutting ties." Then you're explaining just why you're not seeing them anymore. You know, like it right. in a way, cutting ties implies you have to hurt them to an extent, and that's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Mm. Hard stuff. And bitch is just waiting for her to come home, and she won't, and it just. a good chapter. Also, Perry and kisses Flechette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was sweet. That was very sweet. I love it that it was the capstone to her conversation basically being like, I'm I'm not I'm not making ties or making promises. She's like, cool, it's fine. I'll just be your lieutenant. She's like, cool, seals it with a kiss. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> makes messages, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's an interesting power dynamic right because Perian's whole thing is like I don't want you to feel like you own me or like you deserve me or anything like that right yeah and you know and then she's like no 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 fine I'll be subordinate to you and you know I just realized that's uh, it's like a sub dom thing almost yeah <laughs> <laughs> kinky <laughs> Yep, let's go. Yes, it is. <laughs> now use my own sound bites against me. Uh, but really, what though, else let's am I here go. for? <laughs> oh my gosh. On that note, any other any other thoughts on uh, uh, Parian or Number Man? We kind of grouped them together a little bit. Um, yeah. Any final thoughts on those chapters? Oh, I did. I did really like how. Uh, uh, again, from the outside of, of Perian's, you know, how she sees different members of the of the group, how she labels the different type of scary that they are, specifically a cord. And she says that a cord is the type of scary that would be sitting, eating with, a, you know, the perfect, correct way to hold a, a knife and fork and eating like a human, a human limb as he's talking <laughs> to you. And it's like that, oh, that God. like terrifying uh, uh, Silence of the Lambs vibe of like, yeah. just the absolute... Uh, you know, so, perfect table manners while you know eating human flesh, like that. And I love that. I think that's really a really fun way of seeing a cord, and it kind of makes him. It, it puts him in a different, a little bit of a different light for me. But yeah. I, I really, I really like that image. He's giving Hannibal. <laughs> He's giving <laughs> Hannibal. But yeah, yeah, I did think that was fun. Versus like even like Gru and bitch intimidating levels where. Gru is like, he's just this presence, right? You feel like that kind of intimidating. Yeah. Bitch is more the scary of like, you just don't know what she's going to do. Like she yeah, just might. Predictability. Yeah, predictability. She might throw a, a chair at you without, you know, with very little provocation. Yeah. 
All right. Poor Perry. And she's like, I joined this group because of Skitter, and now she's gone. Now she's gone. <laughs> right. Interestingly, though, I feel like Perrion's kind of t- trying unintentionally to take up the mantle, right? She says, I need yeah. to stay with the Undersiders to try to guide them onto a better path. Yeah. So it's an interest how, interesting uh-huh. how, although the leadership torch has been passed to Gru, maybe the the moral heart torch has been unintentionally passed to Perrion. Mm, yeah. So we'll see mm-hmm. how that goes. I also like she mentions she mentions talking about how uh she 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 loved to she liked to see the respect that people gave Skitter and how like even though she did a lot of the same things that Skitter did with her territory with like giving away supplies and stuff, that they don't look at her in the same way that 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 Skitter's people looked at her. And like this idea that she kind of wants to emulate Skitter a lot with like how she runs her territory and how she interacts with her people. I thought that was really cool. I, I like that a lot of like her basically mm-hmm. like looking to Taylor and being like, okay, well, I'm going to try and, and be that in my territory. And it's just not working because it's like, it doesn't translate over the same way, which I, I wonder if it's like a confidence thing or if it's just like, you know, Skitter was always a little bit scarier, or if it's like the mm-hmm. part of town that it is, like whatever it was that made Skitter's territory, you know, Skitter's territory. It's like somehow the respect there is vastly different, even though Perrion's trying to do the exact same things. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's just got to make like a doll full of spiders or something, and it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrifying. Oh my God. That's not. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, Sorry, mental no, image. That's a mental image. Our, I did not our resident arachnophobe. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry, crabs, crabs, crab, crab, crab. crabs. It's just, it's just unicorns filled with crabs. Crabby, <laughs> crabby, crabby unicorn. Anywho, uh, shall we do favorite powers and then wrap this 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 puppy up? Yeah, we'll wrap this one up. Uh, some favorite powers. You got a few to choose from here. A lot of lore. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, a lot of, of good ones. I'll uh, I'll shout out Spree. I loved Spree. Really simple, mm-hmm. horrifying power, but really effective visually <laughs> for me when reading it. It was yeah. just like it was really fun to read. It was just kind of chaotic. <laughs> so gross. Yeah. A lot of fun. I love it. Yeah, I think I don't know. It's kind of hard to pick. Um Getting Othello's powers more explained. I feel like this is an appropriate chapter to yeah. mention him. And Jacob, you're right. Like it's one of the coolest powers. I love where it. What it what it is is like having a body double uh sort of planar shifted in D D terms. An imaginary yeah. friend. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> it's so interesting. Um, so I love his I I do <laughs> I do like um I, I like the little powers too, though. So, like Jacklight and Vex are kind of interesting to me. Even uh, we didn't talk about her, but Rosary is kind of an interesting one too. With that, yeah. Um, so, just I like the powers that are small because I do feel like it reminds me like Taylor's power is a quote unquote small power, but she does so much with it, right? So, you imagine with mm-hmm. training, like what could Jacklight do? What could Vex do? What could uh, Rosary do? Um, it's just an interesting thing to consider. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I also was gonna say Othello. I, I think Othello is really, really cool. But it, it, since since you beat me to it, I'm gonna say Valifor. I even though it's very creepy and scary, uh, I love I love the idea of being kind of like a Simmer type uh, uh, cape where you can plant an idea into somebody's mind and then tell them to forget that mm. you ever told them to do it. Like I yeah, I love kind cool. of that that subterfuge. Like, I think that's really cool. I like that a lot. And uh, paired with it's very uh, death notey. Yes, very, very definitely. Yeah, yeah. And paired with Imp, I think that that's kind of like a fun potential, you know, could be back and forth vibe. But like, obviously, we don't see that happen. But I, but I, I do really like that Valifor is just, you got to look at you and then and you're done for. Ooh. Scary. Mm-hmm. Mine's real quick. It's, it's the number man. Uh, just doing the calculations. Math be mathin'. Math be math. And, uh, math be mathin'. <laughs> And he 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 did the math. He did he did the math. That he did. <laughs> Just imagining anybody asking him like, I mean, but did you do the math? And number man just being like, <laughs> <laughs> just glares. Do you know who the fuck I am? 
that that's when the ballpoint pen goes right in the eye. Right yeah, in yeah. the eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I think that wraps okay. us up for arc twenty one. Fun little fun a whole a whole arc little bit of a just sort of a a down a, uh what's the word Which, I'm thinking of? Uh, a uh, lower stakes. Yeah. Yeah. Arc. A little low stakes. Yeah. Some low fi beats for worm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the words, especially after all we've been through. <laughs> in the immortal words of Gandalf, it's a, it's a deep breath before the plunge. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, just sort of gearing up. Yeah, and we love that. Oh, I don't even know what happens next, and I can't. I don't. I have no clue. But I'm I, so excited. I feel like that thing where you're holding your breath, ready for the drop, and it hasn't yep. happened just yet, and you're just waiting, and you're like, ooh. You're in the Hannah, club, I you're can't still wait bouncing. for you to get to the chapter where uh, Taylor sleeps with clock blocker. It's great. Yeah. Don't <laughs> even put that. Because I would totally. Okay, but actually though, <laughs> Hannah Hannah ships Hannah ships that that matchup way better than every than ship is possible. You, you have a, oh, no. a, a, a <laughs> bay <laughs> full of these ships, and they, any one of them could set sail. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, but <laughs> no. I mean, I like that pairing way better than than Gru and Skitter. So. You know. Well, uh, we know Alan likes that pairing better too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is, Alan, it is my TikTok? preferred pairing, my my OTP, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> we have oh, well coming up next uh, next week. We'll be arc dissecting Worm for Arc Twenty One. And that get you're getting ahead of me a little bit there, but yes, the week. I following will be here that. for that part. So that, so that's fair. So for next those week. of you who skipped Dissecting Worm, <laughs> join us next yeah. time for Arc 22. <laughs> Arc 22. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. It's, you're, you're right. But don't skip Dissecting Worm. Join us next week for Arc 21. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we'll yes. attempt to fit this into our, into our current season, season four. So we'll see how that goes. And then, yes. Yeah, and then Hannah's right. right after that. And then Arc 22, baby. We'll be back for Arc 22. Get into it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. I think, uh, I think that's, yeah, I don't have any other notes. That's all good. Michael, play us out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Read along with us at parahumans.wordpress.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts. What did you love? What did you hate? Anything you think we missed, etc. as long as it's kind. If you'd like to get in touch, you can find us on Twitter, Threads, Instagram, TikTok, and Reddit at Brockton Bay BC, or click the link in the description.